want to metal? I could metal. Do you want to metal? I'll metal if you metal. So we're going to metal? Yes, metal. Then it is settled. We shall metal. The queen of all things metal. DJ Diva Sachia. The following feature may contain references to sex, drugs, and rock and roll. Oh, and some bad language too. The riff. <laughs> Yes, follow me into the flames with Lord Dying. This is DJ Divasaccia. You are listening to Airwave Smackdown on the Temple of All Things Rock. And this is Radio Riff. And tonight, I bring you part two of my Summer of Doom Tour experience from up at El Corazon in Seattle. Where I spoke to lead guitarist Chris Evans of Lord Dying. And it was a fantastic interview and an even 
better show. Hop in the chat room with us at RadioRip.com. If you have anything to say about the band or any requests to make tonight, I am there with my sweetheart, the Lockstar, who is the big boss man here at Radio Riff. And I uh, just want to tell you a little about the band if you don't really know them. They are fantastic. Lord Dying is a four-piece. Eric Olson, their lead guitarist and vocalist. Don Capuano plays the bass. Chris Evans, who I spoke to for the interview, is their lead guitar. And Nicholas Parks is their current uh, touring drummer. Great guy, by the way. I really enjoyed the show. Lord Dying is out of Portland, Oregon. And I love what they say about themselves on their bio. The place overabundant with purveyors of the heavy riff, a region where the inhabitants are plagued with nerve and joint damage due to lack of sunlight. And in being in the Pacific Northwest, as I am, I can relate to this. In a time where everyone is trying to outsludge or outdoom each other, Lord Dying gives something less than a fuck. But what they do give you is an insanely good show. Eric totally sold his band to me as soon as he opened his mouth. Chris Evans plays some killer guitar. Don was great to talk to up at the merch table. And their touring drummer, Nicholas Parks, I got to give a vote to that man. I think they should keep him. He knows how to play the crowd and whoop them up. They are currently supporting their most recent release which is called Poison Altars, and I picked up a bunch of tracks from that. We're going to hear one. We actually just heard one of them a few minutes ago, and that was one of the opening tracks from the uh, <clears throat> from the uh, album A Wound Outside of Time, which also is a fantastic YouTube video, which I encourage you to check out. So now, without further ado, I sit down in the fun house at El Corazon, Seattle, with Chris Evans from Portland, Oregon-based The Ledge Metal Band, Lord Dying. Enjoy and enjoy the tune. This guy is awesome. His band is killer. You got to check them out. The following is a special presentation of Radio Riff, the Temple of Rock. Yeah. 
guys, this is DJ Diva Satya from Radio Riff coming at you from El Corazon in Seattle downtown and I'm talking to Chris, the lead guitar player from sludge metal band Lord Dying. How are you doing today? Pretty good. You are on a Summer of Doom tour going all over the United States. Huge tour. I was looking at all the dates. Is this one of the more extensive tours that you've been on? Uh, it's a pretty long one, yeah. I mean, a little longer than average. I think when I counted, yeah, I looked at it. It started July the th- started July the th- runs through July the third. Sorry, finishes back up in uh, Louisiana. Yeah. Thirty four stops, yeah. it said. And tonight here in Seattle is the twelfth date of the tour. Not quite half day, halfway. Just played in your hometown yeah. at the Hawthorne last night. Was it kicking hot? It was awesome. Yeah. So yeah. it's nice to stay in your bed in the middle of the tour too. <laughs> it was kind of cool to schedule it because you are just about at the halfway point, right? Yeah, a little less. I think that was the tenth show. So. Yeah, ten to eleven show. I read. To go. Yeah. I read. So your press states that your band formed in 2010. Although you have a, you, you guys seem to all have a pretty deep list of credits prior to, prior to getting together. Can you talk a little bit about how the band got started and how you got started on your personal music musical journey? Um. Well, it's probably when I was in sixth or seventh grade. I started getting into like music, like Nirvana and stuff. And then through that, I found out about underground music through like Melvin's and stuff. And then I actually met Eric, the guitar player, singer of this band, in sixth grade, and we started learning how to play guitar together and started playing in bands together since then. So almost every band we've been in has been together. Oh, that's cool. So who got their guitar first, you or him? He did. When I met him, he had just got a guitar, and then so we would play with that, and then I got one. What did he have? What did you have? I think it was an Ibanez. Yeah. And I bought something from a pawn shop called like a GTX or something, if I remember correctly. Yeah. But then we started playing music together, and um, yeah. And that's how you guys get started. So, like you said, you've been in a number of bands together. Yeah, we were in like over the years, crappy punk rock bands and stuff, and then we started getting into metal. Started doing metal bands, and uh, we kind of split up for a while. I was living in Seattle, and he was living in Portland. And then I moved down to Portland in about 2010, 2009, and we started Lord Dunn. So, have you always lived in the Shunnel area? I read somewhere no, we, that you guys were in Utah. Yeah, for a we, while. Met, we met and grew up in uh, Utah, Salt Lake City area. Um, but then, like when we graduated high school, we all got the hell out of it. <laughs> I've been to Utah. It's a beautiful place to visit. It's a nice place to visit. But it's sort of like L.A. I lived in L.A. for five years, and I'm glad that I don't have to do that anymore either. I gotcha. Yeah. The band has put out two full-length albums. First, it was Summon the Faithless in 2013, and then Poison Alders came out in January of this year, and you're currently supporting that release. Uh And I've read really high praise for your band. From sources all across the net, I mean, like you go to Metal Hammer, great review there, Revolver, great review of the album, Metal Injection, great review of the album. You guys are essentially a young band, and yet you've toured with some amazing people. You've toured with Down, you've toured with Valiant Thor, with Red Fang, of course, who you're friends with, with Ghost. Yeah. How often do you wake up and pinch yourself and say, what the hell has happened here? Yeah, we feel extremely lucky, that's for sure. Like, I mean, we started this band just kind of having fun. I don't know, like, Red Fang found out we started a band, we had three songs, and they're like, you have to play the shit with us. So we played it, and then, like, I don't know, it's like, at first, things were just being offered to us, so it was amazing to get that start. And, yeah, we feel really lucky. I mean, I can't believe the crazy start. It's, it's amazing. Have you and Red Fang known each other, like, a long, long time? Like, like since school, too? Or was it not, after that time period? school, but uh, probably, like... I'm 32 now, so me and Eric's band, when we were in our early 20s, late teens, we were on a label called Wantage USA out of Missoula, and they also had a band called Last of the Juanitas that had Brian from Red Fang, okay. and uh, I think Dave might have been in it, and we were playing shows with them, and that's how we met those guys, and we played with each other when we were on tour, and uh, kept in touch and stuff and then Eric had a band called Portals in Portland and their first tour was with Red Fang which was Red Fang's first tour so I don't know just been friends for years and years that's 
that's funny because I just saw something recently where he was talking about portals, and I'm like, okay, my brain is telling me portals the video game. Oh, right, yeah. <laughs> Because I'm a gamer. I don't know yeah. if you are, but I'm a total gamer. A little bit. Not, not much. Not much. I'm a I'm, PC I mean, gamer. I used to play anything. Mortal Kombat a lot. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Everybody had their day yeah. to play something at some point. But now there's just too much to do. Yeah, being an adult has too many Oh, God. <laughs> Tell me about it. I make I make time every now and then, but not as often as I'd like to. Right. Um, one of the things that I really wanted to look into when I got the interview, which I was delighted to get, by the way, because I didn't know a lot about you guys. I'm not a native Pacific Northwesterner. I've only lived out here a couple of years, like four years. Oh, okay. So I'm still learning the history of the metal scene in this area. Mm -hmm. And I think it's really awesome that you guys are so into the older, the real classic, the real... Just some cool metal bands that I discovered when I first started DJing, like Bolt Thrower was a band that I really yeah. liked. We actually and like were Unleashed and Unleashed. Right were you? <laughs> were you? That's cool. I was reading about um, some things that Eric had said about when you shot your video for A Wound Outside Time, and uh -huh. he said that's who we were thinking of when we created that video, Unleashed, In Tune, that kind of stuff. At what point in your life did you become aware of those bands? Um. You know, I don't know, just here and there throughout the past, but, I mean, Eric, Eric's the one who's really into that old school death metal, especially currently, but, um, you know, I don't know, we've always been kind of into the older stuff, just through, uh, I guess people showing it to us or something, I don't know. So you were listening to Bolt Throw on the way here, but who would you pick if you were in charge of what was coming out of the, out of the, whatever, the oh, radio, man, whatever, who would you pick? It's all over the board these days. All over? Yeah. But what are you excited about now? What have you been listening to recently that you thought, hey, this is, this is fucking awesome? Um, we, well, we listened to that new High on Fire album. Really good. To what? The new High on Fire album. That was something I put in today that's streaming. That's really good. Okay. I really like, uh, I don't know, anywhere from like Chopin to Alan Parsons Project to Meshuggah. And see, that's me. That's awesome. See, yeah. you know, I was just reading like an article probably less than a week ago about how there's this stupid attitude about metalheads that that's all we listen to and we're not multidimensional. And yet, that could not be further, further from the truth. Every person that I know that's in the metal, A, either doesn't listen to metal at all when they're not playing it. Yeah. <laughs> Or B listens to very little and it's into like classical and jazz and blues and fusion and everything. Yeah, I mean, the more we tour and hear metal all night, every night, the more I'm exploring calmer music. Most of them are just like, you know, something that uh, sounds new to me. You need an infusion of other stuff sometimes. Yeah. Absolutely. And there are so many things you can borrow. Yeah. A great sound would say, hey. Yeah, that, I mean, that. that you know, you got to take inspiration you everywhere. from the same thing, it's going to keep sounding the same. Right, and God forbid every metal band sound the same. <laughs> we would really get bored because my personal opinion is that metalheads are very intelligent, very passionate about the bands that they love, and typically well-educated about the mu their musical tastes yeah. and have very strong feelings. Sometimes they can be dicks <laughs> about their very one little tiny niche, Yeah. but I'm of the opinion that, you know, we all have a place. I don't care what you call your own little niche and corner of the world. So far this year, oh my God, so far this year you've turned with Anvil, the Sun Lord, with Misery Index, and now with Crowbar and Battlecross. What's in store for the rest of this year? Well, um, nothing's been announced yet, so all I can say is that we're going to be busy. <laughs> Are you touring more this year? Are you allowed to say that? We'll be home less than two months after this and then gone the rest of the year. When will we find out who you're going out with, do you think? Soon, I hope. Soon. Yeah. But it's not up to you to decide, of course. So. It hasn't been announced, so I don't know if I can it. You know? I got it. I don't you. want to get in trouble. No, no, no. I know how that works. I, I know how that works. So that's cool that at least... But your reputation is of a band that's on the road a lot. Yeah. This year, probably more than ever, it seems like. I don't know. Yeah. It feels like a lot this year. And the year's young. I mean, it's only the beginning of June. Yeah. <laughs> I had to remind you, right? Thanks, Satya. Shut the fuck up. <laughs> no, so, it's crazy. interesting. I'm. You can 
probably tell. I'm a huge Battlecross fan. I have been for a long time. Awesome. Like your tour mates, Battlecross, you've had your drummer crisis. You know, when John Reed quit the band just before you started recording Poison Alder. So what's the status of that member of the band now? What's what's the deal with that? Okay. Um, well, we have a, a dude named Joey, who our manager found. He's from Oklahoma. He's 18 years old. And he basically joined our band at the start of the Misery Index tour. So he flew to Portland a week before it, and we rehearsed seven days in a row. And now we've just been on tour nonstop since then. And he's and, 18 uh, and he picked it up in a week. Yeah, he's an animal. He's an animal. Can't wait yeah. to see him. He does windmill hair whips while he drops. It's great. And yeah, we're really happy with him. And he's just, you know, really positive, full of energy, really easy to get along with. And, uh, you know, he's probably our fourth, fifth drummer now. So it's been kind of a revolving cast. So hopefully he sticks around. So you're not decided about that as far as that goes to filling each other out or just... Oh, well, yeah, you know. It's, he's young and you got to give him a little time to sort settle. Sort of on the, you know, he kind of joined as a villain drummer. But, you know, we're, we're looking for somebody to be there, so... Hear that? Lord Dying may have a spot for you if you are a brilliant drummer, okay? But no guarantees, but it never hurts to try. <laughs> I love the Poison Altars video. Oh, thank you. I freaking love it. I dare say Jack Black would be very proud of that moment when you guys strike the guitar chords and the towers go <laughs> crashing down. It totally evoked one of his moments. Yeah. And you must have had a blast filming that with your local band friends. Was everybody in the video from the Portland area? As many as we could get. There were more, but um, we ran out of We had too much footage to keep going. Um, but we had it lined up with like Danova to be in it and Dead Moon and Toxic Holocaust. But like we just had so much footage we had to stop at some point. But it was really fun. I mean, we did it for weeks and every day and... Funnest, yeah. most fun video shoot I've done for sure. It looks like you're having a blast yeah. because you guys are just, just totally so being ridiculous, just out their friends, you know. right? Just ridiculous, and it's a campy story, and you know, it's just like chasing through yeah. the streets and just having a good time. Yeah. So it looks like a blast. Um, I'm going to be airing several cuts from the Poison Alters album with this interview when I air it. Probably the title track and Moon Outside Time. What other track would you want a potential new Lord Dying fan to hear to rep really represent you and why? Definitely, I would say Darkness Remains because it's kind of funny when we wrote that song, we thought it was our worst song ever. And we kind of wrote it to have one more song for the album. And we decided to play it live one night and everybody went crazy. And so we play it live every night now and everybody comes to the merch table and says, what was that last song you played? What album is that on? I want to buy that. So, I would say that's all. <laughs> and that's the last track on Poison Alders, yeah, isn't it? Yeah, we, we play it last every night as well. And, uh, I don't know, people really like it. Like, my, my mom and dad love it. <laughs> and, like, it's, it's just really funny because we just thought it was not a good song. And, you know, but I love it and it's so fun to play. So. Okay, great answer. So, um, speaking of your mom and dad... They're supportive, very supportive of very what you do? Supportive. Yeah. I definitely didn't follow the path that they they hoped I would go on, but they are completely supportive and very happy for me and you know, brag to all their friends. And that's an awesome thing because so many people don't have that experience and support behind them. Yeah. What would you be doing if you were not touring with this band? Trying to tour with band. <laughs> Uh, well, if, okay, let's say if you weren't in music at all, like if you if you had never picked up a, a guitar in sixth grade, what do you think you would have wound up doing? That's an interesting question. I have no idea. I would probably, I mean, before this band, I was going to college for music and kind of looking into other, other ways to do things musical. But, uh, you know, I don't know. I considered psychology at one point because that's really interesting to me. Pharmacy, I was interested in. I, don't know, I like science and stuff, but I really don't know what I would be doing if I didn't feel this way. So you're really dedicated to the music career. I really, I really like it. Yeah, I like being around it. And that's awesome. I was almost a psychology major in college. Two weeks, two weeks before school started, I changed it to music ed. Oh wow. 
So another music. I know, another music. So that's why I got the look on my face like, oh, this sounds like my story. Only a little bit four years. I'm a little older than you. We won't say how much. We won't say how much. All right. Well, I really appreciate your spending the time to talk to me. Sorry that Eric's guitar crapped out, but I really appreciate that you could sit down oh, and talk to me tonight. And I'm really looking forward to the, the show tonight. Um, first, we got some local bands coming on. Then we've got Lord Dying and Battle Cross and Crowbar. How are things going with you and the guys in Battle Cross and Crowbar? Awesome. They're all really nice, really cool people. The bands are great, and the show's just been awesome every night. A lot of people, a lot of just good vibes. It's cool. And that's good to hear because a tour only is good as its weakest member. And if you have no weak members, you're going to have a fucking awesome tour. Thanks for talking to me so much. I really am looking forward to the show tonight. This is DJ Diva Satya, and you are listening to Radio Rift, the Temple of Rock. <laughs>